Now welcome to another edition of News from Naboo with Thor's Lightning Takes. And let's get right to the news. First up, we now have a rumor for the release date of the Acolyte. Collider is reporting that it's going to be June 5th. Like they have it down to a date. I see. Yes, from their super secret Of course, a super forces. secret source that we cannot confirm. Yes. So if we're wrong, it's uh, their fault. Yeah. Disney did not, of course, confirm or deny because they won't be. Why would they? Yeah. They're not going to give you the date until they're like, boom, here's a trailer. What do you think now? <laughs> well, that's uh, that's an interesting thing to point out because if it is the 5th of June, that's, you know, three months away-ish. Ish. That's trailer territory. It is. I kept thinking it was going to be May the 4th for the trailer drop. But they, could be do, like a second they do need marketing time. They need quite a bit, I think, for this. Yeah, because this is, I mean, they're, I, I think they're going to probably try to sell this or market this as like the prequel to the prequels. They're going to have to, yeah. Yeah, that's the, the best way to get the attention of the uh Not the to normies. mention Jedi. Yeah, well, lots, yeah. Lots of Jedi. A lot of lightsabers, I'm sure. We've There's already seen. There's some well-known names in this, too. I mean, you got hey. Trinity. Oh, you were talking about, I thought you meant like Star Wars names, but yeah. No, I think they've got some star power, a little bit of star power in this. Yeah, they There's do. There's some known people in this. Yeah, some. So I think that's what, I mean, they're going to have to push marketing hard because there's no connectivity to, star, you know, that people will just automatically know of. You no, know, I, I think, like I said, I, when the trailer comes like a hundred years before the prequels, yep, that'll it, have, there's almost, it'll open that way, right? Uh, I can almost guarantee that'll be said or acknowledged somewhere in here. It really has to be. Yeah, because you got to let people, people aren't going to understand. They're going to think this is like post-sequel trilogy. Yep. Your average person does not keep up with the Star Wars timeline, so they're going to assume linear. They're going to assume Star Wars next. doesn't even keep up with the Star Wars timeline. Well, sure. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. The average person doesn't know the Star Wars timeline pretty much at all, so they're going to be like, oh, the Mandalorian, this is somehow after that, and maybe around the sequels, mm -hmm. even though all the Jedi are gone. I mean, honestly, uh, the fact that Collider is pointing to June 5th, Makes me wonder if they know when the trailer's coming too, or at least I, have a good they, estimation. Because if you say know that these, too? I don't know. Of course, with the trailer, you know Disney and Lucasfilm could just change the date. They like, can uh -huh. easily anytime they want. They could be like, "Boom, trailer's out right now." What yeah. do you guys say? <laughs> Nothing. Oh, you thought it was coming in uh, a month? No, it's coming today. Mm-hmm. But of course, Disney not saying if this is a concrete date made sense because depending on how things are going in their streaming wars, they might have to bring it forward, push it back. Yeah. Only time will tell There's no that. reason to give yourself a, a deadline if you don't have to, right? Hey, even when they do give themselves a deadline, they just change it. Yeah, I guess. And or. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, season one and or, like, moved around a bunch. Even Kenobi did. Kenobi did, yeah, because it was mm -hmm. supposed to be May the 4th. And then it came out a couple weeks later. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, around celebration, yeah. Mm -hmm. During celebration. Mm-hmm. So we'll just have to wait and see on that front. Yeah, but one way or another... Pretty sure it's going to be soon-ish. Yes. All right, next thing we're going to talk about, two of my favorite Star Wars games are coming to Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, and Xbox. I'm talking about OG Star Wars Battlefront 1 and 2. Hey, that's already on Xbox. What are you talking about? Well, that's because Xbox <laughs> does backwards compatibility, and they're like, oh, you already own that? Yeah, that's fine. Play it. Yeah. We've Play. actually played it uh, not too long ago. I think we played them both again, didn't we? I don't know what you're talking about. On Xbox, Battlefront 1 and 2. We, you still have the physical copies. I don't know I where do still my have original ones copy. are, but you still have yours. And we played them not that long. Probably a couple of years, actually. Okay, but, now it makes more sense. Yeah, you heard, not like not the other long. day. Like last week, remember? No, yeah. it was a couple of years ago, but we, uh, we played them again. I mean, these games came out 2004, 2005, and they are much beloved. They are. I think they're more beloved than the new ones, which is so strange, isn't it? Yeah. But, you know, they're coming to Nintendo Switch, PS4, PS5, Xbox, and PC Ooh. on Thursday, March 14th. Which is soon. Three weeks away, Which basically. is a day that lives in infamy because that's the same day that Disney and Hulu Plus are going to stop you from account sharing. Oh, well, I guess... <laughs> like, they might want you to be busy doing something else that when day. When they take away your Disney Plus, they'll be like, well, I can either subscribe to Disney Plus or get Battlefront. Eh, that's mm. a pretty easy decision there. <laughs> They're all also going to give you the DLC for both games. I don't even know if I had the DLC for both games. The Battlefront DLC will have the bonus Jabba's Palace map. Battlefront 2 will include the playable heroes of Kit Fisto and Asajj Ventress, as well as remakes of the original Battlefront maps for Cloud City, 
Renvar Harbor, Renvar Citadel, and Yavin 4. Somehow, Ventress has returned. Man, again. I played so much Battlefront. Yeah, so did I. I used to play it in my college dorm with my friend who lived upstairs. He would come down and we'd play together. Couch seeing who could get co op. Yeah, plus seeing who could. Uh, it's Yeah, they're, they have it in there too. Score. Again. I'm sure we will be uh, devoting some yeah, time the, to this. The game, the game will include a 64 player online multiplayer, which was possible in the original games, as well as old game modes like Galactic Conquest, as well as Battlefront 2 Story Campaign. This will be like the first time that PlayStation gets to play it since PS2. And the first time ever Nintendo is going to get it. So it's kind of exciting. Yeah, maybe we'll get it on the Switch. Whoa. I know. Whoa. But I'd want a hard copy for the Switch. I feel like I don't want, I don't want to buy more storage for it. Oh, I see I haven't bought like storage for it. I don't think this is going to take up much room. I don't know. <laughs> Believe it or not, these I games back know. then weren't that big. I don't Not like you. today, where you get like 100 like... gigabyte games or more. Next up, we have two new Star Wars books coming this year. After yeah. the Mace Windu. These ones aren't storybooks. Oh, okay. They are my bread and butter, the academic type books. Academic, yes. Yeah. You yeah. and Jocasta knew would be besties. The first book is Star Wars The Rise and Fall of the Galactic Empire. It is an academic style book, it is authored by Chris Kemshaw. He's actually a he's a doctor of his of history. He's a historian. He focused on like World War One, and he's going to use that historical expertise to kind of apply it to Star Wars. As oh, of course cool. you are telling a history. This is supposed to come out on July 9th. Uh, here is the little synopsis. When Sheev Palpatine declared the birth of his new empire, he expected it would stand for thousands of years. Instead, it only lasts 24. <laughs> This is the story of how a tyrannical regime rose from the ashes of democracy, ruled the galaxy with an iron fist, and then collapsed into dust. It is the story of war and heroes. It's the story of propaganda and the power of fascism. But most of all, it's a story of normal people trying to live their lives in the face of brutal dictatorship. From the barbarity of Darth Vader's campaigns to the horrors of the Tarkin Initiative, this book offers new insights into the dark entity at the core of the Star Wars saga, with chapters covering economic strategy and political organization, propaganda, crime, and punishment, military tactics, and warfare, giving even the most expert Star Wars fans a fresh perspective on the Galactic Empire. Well, I'm actually interested in this now. Right, because it's being written like an actual history <laughs> yeah, book. Yeah. Yes. Which it's is not like their usual like encyclopedias that are just kind of like, oh yeah, look, it's a Spe- blurb about this character. Speaking of their usual encyclopedia, oh, that is the second book. Okay. The Star Wars Encyclopedia, the definitive guide of course, to the Star Wars Galaxy. Of course, the extra definitive guide, It yes. is over 400 pages long and comes out September this year. Okay. That means I can throw out my old encyclopedia, Yeah, we've right? got like the last seven versions of yeah. it, yeah. It will have more than 2,200 entries from most current Star Wars films and TV series. Probably not going to have the new stuff because obviously this book's already being worked it's on out, and yeah. published, whatever. It takes a while to get those things in the print. Yep. There's histories of 1,200 characters. There's 100 creatures. 275 entries on locations, including Darth Vader's castle on Mustafar and the world between worlds. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, I knew I'd get you. Ooh. <laughs> 275 vehicles. Uh, 275 other pieces of equipment, like the Beskar armor from the Mandalorian and Luke's lightsaber. Obviously, this is produced in close production with Lucasfilm. The official title is this is the new most comprehensive book oh, on yeah, the market. Since, since last year. Yeah. So, yeah, that'll be fun. Nice coffee table book. <laughs> book would probably break a coffee table. <laughs> Sounds like it. Like my voice. No, nothing. No. Okay, last piece of news today. Star Wars is planning on expanding the lore of the Phantom Menace. In a comic book. Bah, bah, bah. The special edition Phantom Menace. In a comic book. Sort of, yeah. Yes. We're going to get a 25th anniversary celebration for the Phantom Menace in a comic book. And it's going to be interesting. It's coming in May, but there's no specific date yet. This is supposed to have, like, and they use this word a lot, revelatory stories. Revelatory? According to the official synopsis, Yes. Explore the earliest days and secret inner life of Anakin Skywalker with a never-before-seen 
relevatory stories set before, after, and between the scenes of the classic movie, featuring the dream of a Jedi, the gift of a Tusken Raider, the heart of a Gungan, the ache of a mother, and the horror of a hero. All right. So, yeah, these are supposed to be taking place scenes in between that movie. Yeah. I'm sure they're going to be uh, relevatory. <laughs> relevatory. <laughs> you know, the, actually, The Phantom Menace, the novelization, has a few chapters that aren't in the... Uh, what if they're the, just making comic versions of those? That's kind of what I wondered at first, because they do involve Anakin and Tuskens. The book kind of starts... If I'm remembering right, it's been a while since I read it, but there was like a chapter with Anakin and encounters some Tuskens. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. And that's actually given to uh, Terry Brooks, who wrote the book by George Lucas, because he knew Anakin's mother was going to be killed by Tuscan. So it's kind of it's supposed to be like hmm. foreshadowing. Very interesting. It is. Well, you got to wait till September for this one. Oh, okay. Before that, we will have uh, seen The Phantom Menace in theater again. Yeah, because it's coming out again for May the May, 4th. Yeah, somewhere around May. Yeah. May That'll the 4th, be number 11 weekend-ish. for me in the theater. Number yeah. 11. That includes that 3D. We, me and you saw that together, the 3D he version, did. about 10 years ago now. So good. It wasn't bad, actually, in 3D. <laughs> if you wanted to watch Jar Jar's tongue coming at you at full speed. Uh, yeah, well, sure, they had some stupid stuff, too. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I want to be excited for this. I don't know how, like, huge these stories can be. Huge. You know, like, I, obviously, they're trying to sell some comics, so they're going to use uh, Relevatory. <laughs> but, uh, I don't I mean, I'll read it. Hopefully, it's good. Hopefully, there's something interesting. But I'm not, like stupid excited for it just stupid just stupid and that is where we're gonna end it so that's all we got for you this time now it is your turn to take to the comments below and tell us what you think of any and all of today's news so you can check out any of these books or comics and uh how you feeling about the act like coming in june maybe whatever the case may be leave those comments below let's talk some star wars and until next time thanks for watching